Hello everyone and a very very warm welcome to another interesting session from the House of Economics Pedia. And uh, today's session is about um, some topics, subtopics definitely, which has been covered from the macroeconomics part of economics. Okay, and this is a topic as you see the topic is already written on the board. So this topic is very very much basic, it is simple. But however, uh, I am going to explain in this session, this gaps, that is the inflationary gap as well as the deflationary gap with the help of some diagrams. Okay. Now, why this pictorial analysis I'm doing so that you remember the exact gap, like how it looks, what is the reason behind the formation of these gaps and everything. That is how this session has been designed on the basis of the diagrams and of course the explanation followed with them. So stay till the end because till the end you will be, I'm sure you will be able to understand and uh, you know the soak the topic in very very much. So let's start today's session without wasting any more time. All right, so coming to this macroeconomics topic of inflationary gap and deflationary gap, it is uh, very, very simple. So it talks about some gaps, right? Some That means there is some area where the uh, maybe the demand or the supply, maybe they are not equal and that is how this gap or uh, the, the, the difference is being created. So starting, I would love to start with this inflationary gap and this inflationary gap is talking about the gap between the actual aggregate demand and the aggregate supply at full employment level. So if there is this gap between these two, it talks about a gap in the inflationary uh, this this gap is being defined with the help of inflationary gap all right so let me take the help of some diagrams because this definition it will be more easy to remember uh, if we take a help of the diagram and as you all have seen that uh, the main idea of economics media is to make the simplification very lucid so that you remember the topic and its concept more than just you know going through the books and um, uh, just gulping the knowledge because that doesn't help so you really have to understand what is this gap and what is this about all right so let us say this is my aggregate supply curve which is a 45 degree line from the uh, from the origin okay so before moving to the next curves, I would love to mark the axis. So this is output and income. And let's say this is our AD and AS curve that we are measuring. So let us, this is our AS curve. Okay. And this is, let's say our AD curve. Okay. So this is the point where AD and AS are intersecting. Let me mark it as uh, point E, which is the equilibrium point and let me mark it as point M. All right, so this is the equilibrium output income level and this is the equilibrium point. But it talks about an inflationary gap. So that means, let us say if the actual demand looks like this. If this is my actual demand curve or aggregate demand curve rather. So then we can find, let me just solidify the line then we can find that there is a gap okay let me mark it as point b so this be point is nothing but the inflationary gap this be point okay so this so what does this inflationary gap represents it represents that there is a deficiency in the aggregate demand So what does this inflationary gap actually represent? This represents that there is an excess of aggregate demand at the full employment level of the economy. 
and as a result if there is an excess of demand now come to the basics of the economics if there is an excess of demand what will happen how the equilibrium will find how the economy will find an equilibrium very simple the prices will kept on rising right so that is going to happen in this economy as well since there is an excess in the actual demand curve and the supply is very much shortage uh, therefore to meet the demand the prices will go up and of course there will be a new or a higher level of equilibrium where the prices will be higher okay i hope this part is clear now quickly let us move on to the deflationary uh, gap again in the macroeconomics so i hope the diagrammatic explanations are really very helpful to you and i hope you are uh, making a note of this all right if not i think you can take the screenshot so that you can do it in the later half even if you are traveling it's very much easier to grasp the knowledge of economics nowadays because of this uh, technological uh, innovation right okay so coming to this deflationary gaps so this is absolutely the reverse of inflationary gap as the, as the name suggests so it talks about if there is a shortage again again so this deflationary gap is also a gap between the actual uh, aggregate demand and the aggregate supply at full employment level so these two curves are there but the definition changes however so let me give you a little bit hint you can rather pause the video and uh, give it a try so how it will be different so deflationary gap is the place where there is a shortage of the aggregate demand let me just plot it i hope that way you can relate the diagrams very very easily so you should always mark the axis first here it says output or income here we are going to measure aggregate demand aggregate supply right so let me raise it and again following the basic so this is our aggregate supply curve and it is following a 45 degree line from the origin and let us say this is our aggregate demand curve and this is the point of equilibrium or we can say that this is a point where the aggregate demand is intersecting the aggregate supply and that is how it is the equilibrium point now we are since talking about deflationary gap so let us say if our aggregate demand actual aggregate demand is going through this point so this is my actual aggregate demand then what we are finding that there is a gap right there is an excess this let's say this is the point of b so this gap is nothing but this time it is a deflationary gap okay and as a result what we will find that the output level of the economy will also fall right and as a result for this deflationary gap the to reach the economy to a new equilibrium what will happen the prices will fall down because here there is a shortage of demand and the supply is more so what happens in this situation the prices of course it goes down so in inflationary gap what is actually happening and let me also share some of the causes of this inflationary gap along with that so in inflationary gap we are finding that there is an excess of demand right more than the production happening the demand is more so why this is happening there are three main reasons for it for for this inflationary gap to uh, occur in any uh, economy number one if the employment is more or if the employment of uh, economy is more then number one reason that the inflationary gap is happening number two let's say if the trade related activities trade related activities of any economy goes up then also we will find that the demand of the economy is increasing and as a result it is giving rise of this inflationary gap and number 3 if the government expenditure increases 
so if the fiscal expenditure also increases then also there is an x gap that is of inflationary in nature that means the prices is going up in the economy to make the economy move to a newer equilibrium right so that is the main idea of these two gaps so that gaps means there is a disequilibrium in the economy therefore the next thing the economy will be doing is to move to the next part next best equilibrium or rather the stable equilibrium of course that is the objective of the economy to move to however in real economics we will find that there are some gaps that actually exist right so this is all the theoretical part of inflationary and deflationary gaps and i really really hope that these sessions are uh, being very very helpful for all of you to uh, revise your topics to prepare for your competitive exams and um, also to just brush up your own knowledge so if you are one of these categories make sure you hit the like button and if you are new to our channel because we see that you are uh, really finding this channel to be very very helpful but however you are not subscribing so we will love if you subscribe that button and also press the bell icon so that you never miss any update from our channel and uh, that's it thank you so much and this time economics media is here with a bigger version bigger vision to reach out to 10 lakh students across the planet 10 lakh across the planet help us grow help us reach to every corner of this planet of your known ones and see you in the next one very very soon take care